What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own custom health bar in Roblox Studio. Let's get right into it. So first, go over to Starter GUI right about here and open up the plus icon to the right of that. When you click on this, a little drop down menu will appear and you're just going to click on Screen GUI. Let's go ahead and rename this by clicking on it and letting the name change while we have it selected and we can just change this name over to Health. GUI just like that. Some people call it GUI, some people call it GUI, it doesn't really matter just as long as you make it. After that we're gonna add in a frame right about here and we can grab this frame by clicking on it over in the left corner and we can drag it to anywhere that you want it to be. I'm personally gonna put mine down here on the bottom but you can put it anywhere you want whether that be over to the side, up at the top, or anywhere else along your screen. Positioning mine right here, I'm just going to do this, and then I'm going to scale it along this side to get a pretty decent sized health bar right about here. And you can feel free to make the size any which one that you want to. After that, we need to change our size of the GUI from offset to scale. If you don't know the difference, offset makes the size of the GUI in pixels, which means that on any screen smaller or bigger than yours, the GUI is going to look a little bit different because it's based on pixels instead of the size percentage of your screen. Whereas with scale, it uses the percentage of the screen size instead of pixels, so that way we can get a much more optimized GUI over all of our devices. So we want to make sure we just change this. And you want to remember that the first number right here is on the X axis, which means going left and right. And then the third number right here is the Y axis, so that's up and down. And the first and third numbers are the scale numbers. I'm going to personally set this to about 0.2 or so. Maybe 0.1 now that I think about it. And this will take up roughly a tenth of the screen. And we can get rid of the offset by replacing that. Instead of 462 pixels, we can just replace it down to 0. And we need to adjust this scale once again. I'm going to do 0.5. Something like this. In fact, I'm going to do 0.4 instead, for a little smaller compact GUI. After that, I want to do the same thing for our Y here. We can set the offset to 0, and then we set the scale to something pretty tiny, because the up part of it doesn't need to be as wide as our X axis. So we just want to make sure we put something like 0 0.05 or something. I'm going to try 0 0.8 instead of 5. All right, maybe 0 0.7. You're going to meet me in the middle and do 0.6, something like this. So now we have our health bar right about here. We can rename this to our health frame. And inside of here, we're going to add in a brand new frame right here. And what this is going to do is we're going to change the size to 1, 0, 1, 0. This will make sure it takes up the entire size of the frame underneath it. After this, let's go ahead and rename this frame to health bar like this, and we want to change the name of our health frame, not the name of it, but the color of it, so you can change the background color 3 to a dark green if you want to. I'm going to be making mine pretty dark, just a pretty toned down green right here, and the health bar you want to make a much brighter version of that green. So I'm going to do something like this. After that, we can add in a text label into our health frame right here, so let's add in a text label. And I'm going to change the background transparency up to 1, so that we cannot see the background. We want to set the anchor point to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then we can go down and set the position to 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, 0. And this will make sure that it's perfectly centered inside of the center here. After that, you can change the size to whatever you want to. I'm going to do 0 0.1, comma 0, comma 1, comma 0. And this will make a pretty square right here in the size of our screen. And then we can change the font if you want to down the properties. I'm going to choose for Doka 1. I'm going to change the text to 100%. Then we can choose text scaled and the text color you can change to whatever you want to. So now we have this right here. I'm going to rename this text label to percentage. And last but not least, we can go into our health bar frame right here. Click on the plus icon and insert a local script right about here. Now when you click on the local script, the script editor should appear right about here and that is perfect. I'm going to zoom in real quick and there are a few things that we need to get real quick. 
I'm going to start off with a comment at the top just to say that these are our variables. We're going to say local player will equal to game.players.localplayer. After that, let's get the player's characters. We're going to say local character equals to player.character or player.character added colon weight. The reason why we add or player.character added weight is just because if we were to write player.character, sometimes the character hasn't loaded in all the way before we declare this variable, so it'll just return nil instead of player.character. We just want to make sure that if it doesn't find the player's character immediately, we wait for the character to be added to the player. For this variable, let's say local humanoid will be equal to character colon find first child parentheses inside of those quotation marks and we're going to be searching for the character's humanoid just like this for that we can get our local health bar which is going to be equal to script.parent and then we can create a new local function which is going to be called update health with parentheses just like this we're going to say local size is going to be equal to math.clamp if you look at what math.clamp does real quick, you can see over here, it returns a number between a minimum number and a maximum number. So we get to choose three different numbers, basically. We choose the number that we want to return, then we choose a minimum or a max number. We're gonna do math.clamp, and the number that we're going to be choosing is going to be our character's humanoid's health, divided by their max health, which will return a number pretty much anywhere between zero and one. So we're going to say humanoid.health divided by, with a slash, humanoid.maxhealth. Now we put a comma right here, a zero, and then another comma, and a one, just like this. After that, we say healthbar.size equals to udim2.fromscale and do udim2.new, this is going to be health or oh, not health bar but so we're going to say udim2.new is going to be our size for the x axis scale number right here now we're going to put a zero because we don't want any offset number then we're going to put one on the y scale number and we're going to put a comma and then a zero because we don't want any offset whatsoever so this will determine the size of our health bar for that we want to say script.parent dot parent dot percentage dot text will be equal to two string we're going to do math dot floor which will return the largest integer smaller than or equal to the number that we choose this is going to be and this is going to be our size variable times 100 and then outside of these parentheses we put dot dot quotation marks and then our parentheses and then our percent sign. After this, we put a dot dot right here because we're going to be concatenating a string and we put a percent sign just so that the player knows that this is the percentage of the or health that they have left. After that, we can go down a few lines right about here and we just want to say update health because if we call this function when the player because we want to make sure we update this function as soon as the player joins in that way they make sure they know the correct amount of health they have just in case they don't actually start with a hundred health next we're going to say humanoid colon get property changed signal is going to be the health property that's changing we're going to connect update health so what this is doing is that whenever our humanoid's health gets changed it's going to send a signal that's going to connect our update health function and then we're going to do that same thing get property change signal and this is going to be for our max health because we want to make sure that in case you're making a game like a weightlifting simulator or something where when you gain when you lift the weights you get a certain amount of extra health boost so we want to make sure we add that in there too and this is going to be our same connect update health and now let's go over what this function is doing so this update health function has three lines of code inside of it We've got our first line of code, the variable here, which is our size variable. And what it's doing is it's basically dividing our humanoid's health, the current health that they have, let's say it's 100, divided by the humanoid's max health, let's say it's also 100. So 100 divided by 100 would be 1, 
and so it's returning a number between 0 and 1 depending on what this number was. So since that return of the number of 1, we can use that same 1 right here for our size that we're going to use for the bar, and we can use it to determine the text. All we have to do is times it by 100 right about here, and you can see that we have the correct percentage of our player's health. So we're taking the humanoid's health divided by the humanoid's max health. Let's say both are equal to 100, that means we're left with one, and we can use that value to change the size of our health bar and the percentage or the text of our percentage text label right here, I mean to say. After that, we update our health function whenever the humanoid's health changes just to make sure we stay on top of things and these are just variables that we discussed earlier and so yeah that's what all this code does right here however inside of this variable the humanoid variable we just need to make sure that this says wait for child instead of find first child and that'll make sure that we make sure we wait for the humanoid to load in properly let's go ahead and click on play and now that we're in the game you can see that the health bar is at hundred percent now let's open up the workspace and find our player's name, which is Rusty Silly Band for me, but it's going to be different for you. And then you click on your humanoid right here, and let's change the health inside of the properties. I'm going to scroll down here and just change it from 100 down to 50. And you can see that not only is the health bar at half, but it now says 50% right about here. And you can change this to whatever you want to. If you wanted it to be 63%, if you want this to be 90%, even if you're using some sort of kill part or any other part inside of here that's dealing damage to your player, it will definitely work. So make sure you try that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial and learned from it just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.